this is how much money you need to make in order to pay all your bills and to pay you. Yeah. So you think you you need to pay yourself two and three thousand dollars a month, but you have all these other expenses. You really right. need to you really need to make eight thousand dollars a month in revenue. And that's not profiting. Yeah. That's just paying your bills and yes. paying your giving yourself a paycheck. Um, but how do you know how much you need to, to make if you don't go through this process? Exactly. So that's why business planning is so important. Hi everyone, it's Tiffany Stacy. I'm your host for Cooped Up. I'm a photographer, videographer, and owner of Tiffany Stacy Photography and Video LLC. And on today's show, I have Deanna Barnett. Deanna is the founder of Affinity Enterprises that launches helps launch new businesses through business model design and business planning. She also helps minority business owners obtain certifications on the city, state, and federal levels. Please welcome Deanna Barnett to the show. Woo! Hi there. <laughs> so um, just a little bit of background for everybody. I met Deanna through the ACE program, which is the Academy for Community Entrepreneurs through uh, mm -hmm. Central Community House here in Columbus, Ohio. And she helped me basically design a business plan. It was a, it was a six-week class, I think, it was six weeks. Yep, uh, Deanna, six, six yep. week business mm -hmm. class, and uh, she helped me design a business plan, which I haven't fully been able to realize yet with this whole COVID-19 situation going on, but she was amazing, and I learned so much in her class, and so I just thought it would be a good idea to bring her on the show and give you guys some insight on starting a business and what's going on with this whole business loan situation, since she's just so super knowledgeable about everything that's going on right now. Trying to be. <laughs> Trying to be. <laughs> All right, Deanna. So first and foremost, what's what's so what thank you so much, on? Tiffany. Oh yeah, no problem. There's a delay. <laughs> so Deanna, um, can you explain to my audience like what's really going on with this business um, loan situation that's going on? Sure. So uh, initially, the government put forth programs to help small businesses and a small business can be up to 500 employees so um the economic injury disaster loan was put into play uh the paycheck protection program to help maintain and retain their employees uh, was put into place and um, as soon as those programs um, became available, small businesses rushed to apply for those loans. Um, the economic injury loan, ten, the first 10000 of it, uh, was a, uh, a grant to support the businesses while the rest of their loan dollars came in. And what we learned through that process is that they couldn't give ten thousand dollars as a grant to everyone who applied so they ended up providing portions of that as a grant so if you applied and said you he they gave a thousand dollars for each employee so you got only three thousand dollars versus the suggested ten thousand um, dollars you may have also noticed that the grant said that the funds would be available in your bank account in within three days of applying. That didn't happen either. And there are still some people after two or three weeks still waiting to, to receive something. The Paycheck Protection Program, also known as the PPP, came out to um, support the uh, employee base of the small business to retain them so that everyone didn't have to flood unemployment compensation. Um, and what happened with that was the larger companies with um, uh, larger numbers of employees rushed to get that paycheck protection program. They fell in the category of a small business and received millions of dollars. And so at the end of the day, the money ran out. And um, then we had to work to get more money into those programs so uh, there is legislation that is about to pass um, t either today or tomorrow and so hopefully
residents to support these small businesses. There's going to be new criteria. It could be the same criteria. We never know. Things are always changing. Um, so more money is coming for small businesses. Some of the larger corporations, uh, not corporations, some of the larger businesses that got the Paycheck Protection Program, some of them are returning some of the funds to support the smaller businesses. So um, that's great, but we are waiting for more money. That's essentially what's happening. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know that I was one of the people that had applied for the economic disaster loan, and I, I haven't heard anything. I haven't gotten any kind of response. So it's just been, um, um, you know, I've been watching the news and trying to stay abreast on what's going on but it's just it's like you said it's just things are changing so often that it's just it's kind of hard to keep track and it's hard to yeah. figure out okay well like what's yeah what's what's up been updated you know what's remaining remain, remaining the same and what's changing so yeah, yeah. so um there's a lot of there's a lot of um, business owners who have not received anything. I posted a uh, poll on our Facebook group, Entrepreneurs of Increase, and um, um, more people have applied and had not received anything versus those who have applied and have received some things. So there were only a few people who have received any money thus far. So we're we're hoping that that changes with the additional um, stimulus. Yes. Hopefully so. So, um, so really, the purpose of this, um, aside from the loan situation, the purpose of this interview was to kind of get to know you and what your business does. Since you've been so helpful with my business, um, just can you share with everyone uh, what what you do, a little bit more about what you do and how you help businesses. Sure. So as a consultant and um, essentially an advisor, I help businesses tackle challenges head on. Um, I help them identify problems before they happen. I help companies get up and running from um, idea, ideation um, to implementation and launch. Um, I assist small businesses in uh, projects that they may have. Maybe they don't have enough um, staff or uh, team to support whatever project they're working on. Then I jump in and help them develop that project. I've helped people develop online training courses, um, making sure that have a good program outline and program outcomes for their training. Because I have about 10 years of training experience, actually 12, um, I'm able to kind of help them through sort of like a logic model and making sure that their training is um, efficient and effective and they get the desired outcomes. Um, so as a consultant, I do uh, a number of things. My day is generally never the same. Um, there's different challenges that businesses experience, and that gives me the opportunity to learn so that when other businesses experience that, I can kind of give them insight into uh, that particular challenge. So that's no. essentially what I do. Now, what ex what inspired you to get into this type of work? Have you always been involved in consulting work? Or? So um, I was at a, I was working at a local, new, um, I was in the advertising section selling uh, classifieds, but it was the display ads. So it wasn't like the liners, the line, lined um, ads you see in the back of the newspaper. It was, mm -hmm the display ads. And what was and this place again? It, you kind of cut out a little bit. It was a local um, newspaper, neighborhood newspaper. So newspaper. they had, um, uh, and they're, they're not even in existence anymore, but they had um, newspapers throughout all the neighborhoods. Um, oh, okay. Westerville, New yes. Albany. I, I think Beach, I remember that. Northland. Okay. Yes. All right. So um, I handled uh, display ads in the Back. And generally, those the people who were advertising in the back of the newspaper were small businesses. I'm coming from oh, OSU. I was a recent graduate, uh, studied business at the Fisher College of Business uh, with a specialization in marketing. So the uh, my other colleagues, they didn't really have any marketing experience. Uh, they were just in sales and they were just placing ads. So with a little bit of education in the marketing industry, I was able to give our customers a little bit more than just placing an ad. So 
I found myself talking to the small businesses coming in to uh, or calling in and saying, hey, you know, you can do this. You can say this. You can put your ad in this newspaper because your market is here. Uh, want to use this image, you should try using this image. So I was giving them a little bit of extra uh, service in their advertising with that paper. And there was one particular client that made me realize that I really like what I'm doing. And it was a lawn care guy. I can't remember um, the name of the company, but um, he was advertising. We, he was very consistent. And he called in, he said, Deanna, you know, my ad is just not working. I don't know what I should do. Tell me what I should do. And we, we tried different things throughout the, the round. Um, my last conversation with him was, you know what? You need to try a different placement in the newspaper. And you need to go into the front of the newspaper. And he said, okay, well, let's do it. Um, if you go in the, the front of the newspaper, it's like a color ad. You get more dimensions and extra stuff, right, than just being in the back of the newspaper. I said, okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to have to transfer you over to the retail department because they handle ads in that section. And he said, so that means I'm not going to be able to talk to you? I said, no. Once you go over there, then you that's you got to work with the, the reps there. He said, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I'll just stay in the back of the newspaper. I said, no, you got to you got to do what's best for your business. And so I, I persuaded him to not out and move to uh, the different department so to do what's best for his business. And um, after we got through with all that, I was like, I like doing this. Um, even though he didn't continue working with me and he wanted to, it made me feel good. He wanted to, and I felt like I was making an impact on his business. And I think that was my, that was my aha moment. It's like, this is what I want to do. Yes. And so after that, I found work in doing what I'm doing, doing now. Well, and you've been such a blessing to many of us small business owners. Oh, well, thank <laughs> so you. Thank you to that gentleman there <laughs> for inspiring you. So I wanted to ask you, um, considering with everything going on with COVID-19, it would this be a good time to start a business? So it depends on what kind of business you are trying to start? Um, I say yes. Uh, it's a really good time. Some of the most popular businesses that we know today actually started out of a recession or an economic downturn. So like if you go all the way back to the Great Depression, that's when Disney got started. Disney started just to give everyone a smile because we were depressed. Um, and out of just that thought and idea and care for the people um, created this uh, empire of so many different lanes um, and, and business lines. So Disney create, was created out of a, a recession or economic downturn. Um, some other major companies that we know today that came out of the economic downturn was Airbnb in 2008 during that recession. Um, they, they working for short-term living commitments because you know real estate was going down and people were leaving their homes um, they needed short-term living so airbnb um, was a result of that uh, groupon came out at the same time um, and that whole idea was to give deals to customers who needed to save as much money as they can and what came out of that was a great marketing tactic for brands to connect with their consumers and in 2009 uber came out um, as a result of not be, as a result of the founder not being able to find a taxi, um, so with all of those different companies, they came out and were launched out of recession, out of need. So as long as you can solve a problem for someone, and that person is willing and able to pay you for that solution to that problem, you can start a business, whether it's a a recession or not, or COVID-19 or not. There are, um, uh, I see some small businesses making shifts and pivots and what they're doing now. Say that they'll go back to the way they used to do things. This may give them um, uh, a new way of doing things, a new business model that is actually more profitable than the model that they had before. So um, if you have an idea that solves someone's problem today, um, 
you could definitely try to launch that and see how it works. Well, that's that's very hopeful for some of those that have been on the fence about starting a business. So thanks mm-hmm. for sharing that. So yeah. my thing is, I know with me um, and how I've come to work with you, what would be some of the steps that that person would need to do in order to feel like they're um, going to venture into maybe a viable business? Okay. Uh, so I have a um, online class called How to Start a Business. It's free. So we'll make sure that everyone <laughs> gets access to that. Uh, but I'll take you through the 10 steps. And that to first have that concept or idea. And that concept should be solving a problem for someone. Um, and then after you figure out what problem you want to solve or what problem you want to address, do some research on it and learn more about about that. You may not have any knowledge or experience in that. So take some time to research and see how that industry is going. What are some things that you need to be considering um, as you are exploring this concept? Um, And then once you get a better understanding of it, try and do it on your own. Test it out. Um, So before you do any legal, legalize your business and um, do your branding, test it first. And how you do that, you find a family member or a friend or some, um, a focus group and, and deliver that product or service to them and find out what they think about it. You may learn that no one wants that. And it's better to learn about that earlier on than to go through that whole process of getting your business started and spending money, getting it going, and realizing that no one wants what it is that you're offering. That's the worst feeling as a business owner to have something that nobody wants and then don't get mad that they don't buy from you. They don't want it. Um, So um, test it out first before you do anything else. And then when you um, improve and you find out what people are really wanting, then develop a business model around that and see how is this business actually going to make money? What are my revenue streams I need to focus on? What are my, um, key functions of this business that I need to focus on? What is the true value of this whole entire concept to begin with? So I can articulate that with customers buy from me. And when you have a better understanding of the foundation of your business through your business model, then you can work on your business plan. And the whole point of the business plan is to prevent you from making mistakes that you don't need to make business planning is so important. I started businesses without a business plan and I started a business with. It was so much easier to start a business after I wrote that plan because I had already scratched out all the stuff that doesn't work. I've already scratched out everything that's going to cost me more money than it needs to. That it needs to. Um, the first business I started was a residential cleaning service. I had no business plan. I was just like, I'm going to clean houses and I'm going to clean um, uh, Houses over $300,000 and and so what happened was, well, one, I didn't like it. I hadn't even considered me liking what I was going to get into. Um, And I spent more money than I needed to. I had um, a real real estate investor. um, uh, He agreed to work with me and I was going to clean some houses that were going to go under rehab. And there was one particular house that had mold in it. And I was like, well, how am I supposed to do this? And he was like, um, well, I have companies come out all the time and they, and they clean out the mold. So I go there and um, there's no running water. Oh, and wow. I was like, yeah. well, how am I supposed to do this? And he yeah. said, oh, well, the companies, they, they come out and they, they bring their own water. And oh. I'm like, I'm like 20 years old. Okay. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, I can bring yeah. my own water. So I go out and I buy like these big containers um, and I'm like using my water yeah. and putting it in these big containers and then loading these big containers in the car. And then I get into the house and I come in there and I bring in my, I think I have four or five big five gallon containers. And I get there and I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> this is impossible. Yeah. By now the water's not even hot. Um, oh and so I'll, I had to just pack up all my water. Yeah. And go back home and say, um, you know, this is not going to be, uh, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. And how long were you doing that up until that point? 
um, probably six months. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I have been doing it for six months because uh, I started with houses and then I went into like, I tried to get contracts with um, OSU and doing um, off campus housing cleaning like during yeah. um, turnovers, whatever. Um, so the marketing piece, getting the clients wasn't the issue. It was like doing the work and then understanding how much money am I actually making from these from these jobs. And long story short, I I quit this business because one, I didn't like doing it. Um, and um, well, that was the main reason. So I, I would definitely say make sure you have an interest or a passion about what it is that you're doing because that's what's going to keep you going. Um, if you don't have that, you, it's, easy, it's too easy to quit. So um, your idea, your concept should definitely be uh, centered somewhere within yourself so mm -hmm. that it wakes you up at night and forces you to think about how I can do this better, how I can make this more efficient, how I can serve as many people as I, as I mm -hmm. possibly can. So that's another thing. Um, so where was I? Oh, business oh. plan. Yes. Now, did you? Um, yeah. Um, well, and I'm curious. So, so after the cleaning business, did you, did you go into the consulting or did you try other multiple businesses or? The cleaning was before the newspaper. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That so I was sense. like, I quit this and, and I'm job. So, and then at the newspaper is when I realized this is, this is what I like doing because the whole idea of getting that residential cleaning business up and going was like a, it was exhilarating. I had like, I had employees. We had employee meetings. I had a handbook. I had a, a brand, a logo. Uh, we had a, a onboarding orientation. We were going out cleaning. Um, and then some of the employees were like, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it on today. I got to do, you know, I got to request off. And I'm like, okay. So that's oh, me. Wow. Yeah. It's me. I got to do it. It's okay. you. Like, yeah. So. I got to do it. I was like, I don't want to do it. I want to. Right. And that um, was the reason why you hired so the team. That was a lot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I remember why. So yeah. It's just that it was just one year. It was just one year. Oh, um, my goodness. I Jesus. spent, um, you know, extra money on water containers. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually lost money on that job because I didn't even do it. Yeah. Um. So business planning, if had I gone through that process and saw, like, well, one, you don't like doing this, so don't do it. Mm -hmm. But then two, this is take. This is how much money you need to make in order to pay all your bills and to pay you. Yeah. So you think you you need to pay yourself two and three thousand dollars a month, but you have all these other expenses. You really right. need to you really need to make eight thousand dollars a month in revenue, and that's not profiting. Yeah. That's just paying your bills. And yes. paying your giving yourself a paycheck, um, but how do you know how much you need to to make if you don't go through this process? Exactly. So that's why business planning is so important, very very it, important. But those are the first five steps. When you are yeah, uh, getting ready to start a business, and I think that's what I learned the most from your class was just yeah, it's like I definitely wish I would have had a business plan before I, I started my business I mean honestly now like I'm I'm thinking about uh, venturing off and doing some other business opportunities and right from the start I'm going to make sure I have that plan <laughs> I'm like yeah yeah, yeah. I was like I need it because it's just yeah it's just you just I mean of course like you you can't foresee everything that's going to happen but right right you know it's like it's good it's a good road map to have <laughs> and you'll also know how how to, so if there is something that um, comes in your way, like COVID-19, you'll know how to quickly pivot because you've been through this process before. So a business plan is a living document. It's supposed to change. Yeah. If it doesn't change, then there's there's something else that we need to talk about. But your business plan is supposed to change. Some people write their business plan and right. never change it. That's not what that's there for. It's not. Um, as, a, right. as an entrepreneur, you have to work your business just like these fortune 500 ceos work they're reviewing they are setting goals they're going back did i meet those goals no i didn't why didn't i who do i need to meet those goals who's not working for me 
who is taking up too much of my time? Do I need to bring somebody else in or replace somebody? Um, all of those things, you still have to do that, even though it's just you or it's just you and two others. You need to do, you need to review, you need to plan, you need to set goals, and you need to be strategic. Yes. And one of the things that I did um, with learning from this whole COVID-19, I remember we had talked um, a few, well, about a week or so ago, and I remember you had said something about, um, and moving, going back to like uh, the COVID-19 and d different ways to, for relief, I remember you had said something about the business insurance, and I had just read an article recently that before mm -hmm. this all hit with the COVID-19, some of the, um, I guess, business insurance agencies, they were... Um, they were taking, is it pandemic off of their policies to, or they were never on there to begin with yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So I don't know if you know anything about that, but. So in your insurance policy, there is, um, uh, um, it's called business interruption service. This is to support your business in case your business is interrupted. You could um, use your, your policy to, um, or replenish the revenues that you would lose from business interruption. But many of the insurance policies say um, uh, business interruption services, not including cases of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and so when this pandemic came and people were considering using their insurance policy for business interruption um, insurance, uh, realized that they couldn't no one could and so there were some petitions um, going to go to government to have that uh, law put in place that prohibited insurance companies from not issuing out claims for a pandemic so mm -hmm. I don't know the update on that uh, but that was that was the big issue with the insurance companies they're there to help in case our business is interrupted and it was and they weren't there Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it was just, it's very, um, it's something that, that I will definitely take with me in the future when I, you know, decide to work on other businesses that, you know, now knowing what we know now with this pandemic, that it's definitely, we have to look at our policies to see if that's even something that's covered. Yeah. And then I think that if it's not, then figuring out a way to pay, I guess, the additional, um, additional funds for that type of policy. Yeah. Owner. Yeah. Yes. And, and and being prepared for the unknown. There's a lot of small businesses yeah. out there who are not saving uh, portions yes. of their money, of their revenue. You might need to put that in your business, which means, or your uh, budget, which means that you need to sell even more than $8,000. Then I need to yes. sell $9,000 a month so that I can create a cushion. Don't use all your money. Don't use all your money. You need to be able to uh, manage yourself exactly. in case of some type of interruption and you don't get the support like um yeah these larger corporations are getting yeah exactly so it's definitely a lesson learned so but um i don't know if you wanted to share maybe more some more um last tips uh, as far as creating a business or things that you've learned sure. in your ex in your your field um you can do that now <laughs> Yes, um, so I would say uh, if you are interested in getting started or if you are in business now, don't do this alone. A man is not an island and neither is your business. So get connected with like-minded um, people. Uh, get connected with other entrepreneurs. Uh, become member of, members of, local, of a local business association. Um, here in Columbus, we have the Central Ohio African American Chamber of Commerce. We have the Columbus Chamber of Commerce. We have NABO, which is the National Association of Women Business Owners. Um, there are um, tons of membership organizations that you can consider to be a part of. Um, I highly recommend that you do. So that it doesn't feel like you're alone. Um, entrepreneurs, when they um, go through different challenges, they may feel like they're the only ones going through it and you're not. Mm -hmm. So many people are going through the same exact thing and you could be getting the advice and support of other people who've gone through that and they can show you how to get through that and they can be your motivation and your inspiration to keep going. So definitely get connected uh, with other people. But I would say that would be my uh, number one, number one tip, um, about being in business. I'm going to allow you just a few 
minutes to shamelessly plug yourself and your company and what you do and any classes that you have coming up um, sure. for my audience and anyone else that sees this video. So please go okay. ahead and share. I have a new program that is not um, online or anything, but um, with the real pilot and it's called um, the Emerging CEO Program and it's one-on-one -on -one consulting and coaching to uh, increase your revenues and profitability. Um, some of the people who've gone through it have um, already doubled their revenue, so excited about that and I want to um, continue offering that. Um, so it's the Emerging CEO, Emerging CEO Program. Um, if you're interested in that, you can connect with me. I am online on Facebook. You can follow Enterprises on Facebook. Um, you can also schedule an appointment with me at www.aventienterprises.com. Aventi is A-V-E-N-T-I enterprises.com. Um, and you can also follow me on IG at Startup Biz Fanatic. Um, so if you're interested in the Emerging CEO program, let me know. I'm also teaching classes at Cultivate and Grow City and in London. Right now we're live streaming classes. Um, so that's Cultivate. And um, of course, through uh, Tiffany's program, ACE at Central Community House. Classes there um, right now. The organizations are allowing me to do online classes, so you're welcome to join. Um, if you're not comfortable getting out of the house right now, we're online. We're online. So and with, that was through Ace. That was through Ace and Cultivate. They're and both. Cultivate. Um, they're both streaming uh, classes okay. online. And if uh, working with these partners is really good for those who may not have a lot of funds to uh, take um, some with this. So definitely get connected. That's, that's the, uh, the tip is to get connected. Get as much resources as you can. Exactly. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Deanna, for sharing their insight with all of us. And um, I'm going to go ahead and close out the show. Uh, okay. Again, my name is Tiffany Stacy, and I was your host for it, Cooped Up. Uh, every Thursday, I should be posting a business-related or personal professional development type video or interview every Thursday. So definitely come back and see me and, and whoever might be my guest at that time. So again, this is Cooped Up, and I will be back. All right. Bye.